I'd like to take this chance to apologize to absolutely nobody. Welcome back, the Church of MMA podcast. I'm Tabor Cragen. And I'm Mason Knight. And uh, today we are here, Tabor. Yeah. We're here to talk uh, some UFC news. It's been a yeah. little minute since we met up. Yeah, it it's has been. about been. two weeks. Yeah, and a lot has actually happened. It has. These past two weeks, like Believe it or not. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of nice, you know, there's always drama in MMA. It's because yeah. these guys are literally going to go kill, kill each other, so it's like, you know. Yeah. They've always got something to say on Twitter. Yeah, a lot so, of them love talking shit. Yes, they do. <laughs> they do. It, well, it makes it fun. It does. It does. It gives us something to talk about. It does. Yeah, it gives us some least. content. Gives people. It gets people interested. We still don't know what the fuck's going on, though. No. <laughs> and we don't know when things will get back to normal. <laughs> if they ever even will. I don't know, yeah. We, there might never be another fight again. Tabor, have you, have you watched <laughs> Contagion yet? I got to ask you this no. question real quick. Please go watch it. It's literally... Pretty close to what we're doing right now. Really? Yeah, it's really, it's pretty spot on. Talks about social distancing, and this is 10 years before any of this kind of stuff happened. Yeah, it's kind of, it's it's fascinating. So it's, you it's, should check it out. It's fucking, the conspiracy theorists always say fucking Hollywood always preps us for futures and shit like that. Like They do say that, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess they did. Yeah, maybe they did. <laughs> they yeah. did. Unbeknownst for to this us, movie they at least. did, yeah. Yeah. How crazy is it? Like, is it like super fucking like spot on? It's spot on, yeah, in a lot of ways. I mean, obviously, it's not called coronavirus, yeah. but uh, it, it's spot on. Except the death rate is like forty or fifty percent, as where you know coronavirus is Ooh, not, yeah, it's not forty or fifty. Yeah. yeah, is this still like above one percent of the people infected are dying? I don't think it is. I have no idea. I think it's below one percent of everyone that's like, like there are so many people that are just positive that just. Well, I don't. I don't, don't know show for symptoms. sure because I know there's. Isn't there like at least there's got to be at least a hundred thousand deaths, right? I mean, no, it, it, worldwide for sure, I would think, but just this country, I think we're around eighteen, maybe more. I th- no, we're over twenty at least. Yeah, we've got to be it's over worth, 20, it's worth a Google. It's over yeah. twenty at least. I would say twenty five. Yeah, because I don't want to misinform. Let's see. Um, yeah, it's, it's 42,514 according to world meters dot info. That's coronavirus. That's the U S or is that that's U S yes. That's United States coronavirus. There's 792,000 cases in the United States. Almost a million. Yes. Almost point zero something percent of the population. I don't I, I don't know the numbers on that though, Dave. Well, how, well, how many people? Well, how many people are in the U.S.? They say three fifty. Yeah, I say there's there. Well, dude, they're, they don't know how many people are actually here. Yeah, that like, is think true. about just like you know illegals and stuff like that. But I don't. I shouldn't even call them that. But fucking whatever. Uh, there's got to be a shit ton of them. I'd say there's four hundred thousand people and four hundred million. That's people, actually sorry. pretty high. The percentage eighteen point five for one million. Of what? 400 million? No, no, no. What I'm saying for the coronavirus cases and deaths. Oh, so the death ratio, 18%? Okay, no, that's not actually... 18, 1. 1.8. Oh, okay. Okay, I was... Like... I, think, I think I moved the deaths in the wall over. I was I like, 18%? Know, Holy we should not be talking shit. about... <laughs> Math, I don't know. Do not get your information from us. First and yeah. foremost, we're just talking. We're BSing. We don't know anything because... Yeah. I was like, damn, 18%? No, Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no. this is bad. This is way worse after, than I thought. After you said 18, I was like, no, it's 1.8, not 18. No That's way. That's funny. That's funny. Well, man, oh, like, uh, <laughs> move on from that in yeah, MMA. We move on. Yeah, let's go to M- uh, MMA. Uh, yeah, we're not, we're not uh, health experts, obviously. We not, no. And we're definitely not MMA experts either. But you know what we are? We're fans. We are fans. And that's what we we're do. We're big fans. We talk about shit. Yep. We shit talk. And we have fun doing it. And, uh, you know, last time we were talking, guys, we were talking about a lot about we didn't know what the future was holding with uh, 249. We didn't have a main event. Nothing was happening. We had no idea who was even going to fucking fight. We didn't have any confirmed fights. No. Nothing. We nothing. had nothing. We had uh, rumors of Justin Gaethje, Tony Ferguson, and we were just left in limbo. And then that Monday came around. Oh, boy, what a <laughs> Monday. <laughs> what a fucking Monday. Jesus, what a card they dropped out on that Monday. Yeah. It was. What a card. Justin Gaethje, Tony Ferguson got confirmed the Monday, two weeks out before the fight. And wow, I was hyped. I couldn't wait. Justin Gaethje, Tony Ferguson. Let's just look at the card a little bit. Mm-hmm. Holy shit. Justin Gaethje, Tony Ferguson, Rose Nami Yunus versus Jessica Andrade 2, Dan Hardy, DeCastro, Luco Price, 
or Luke versus Price, Stevens Cater, Nagano Rosenstrike. I could just stop right oh there. Oh my god, yeah, you could, and that'd be a fantastic card. Yeah. But it keeps going. Oh, David. it keeps going. Hall and Jacques Ray, Hernandez and uh, Morias, Vera and Borg, Johnson Worthy, Eubanks, Morris, and uh, Span and Alvi. Yeah, and they're just starting it off with a banger. Sorry, that was my water bottle. They're starting it off with a <laughs> banger. It's sealed. Uh, Span versus Alvi, Sam Alvi. I fucking love this guy. I'm not gonna lie. I know. I love. He's been around a minute too. (laughs) He has been around, and he's only got two weapons. He's got a straight right and a left hook. That's all Mm -hmm. he throws. (laughs) It's literally all he throws. But he still goes out there. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. he does. Yeah, I love that guy. So what a card they announced! What a great card! I was so hyped. I was like, holy shit, this might actually happen. Yeah, I didn't know. I had no idea. I, I was so skeptical because all this bullshit with Tony and Habib and we were just left in limbo for the longest time. Dana said this fight card was happening, and then finally we got some fights. Yeah. And finally. some great fights, too. This, great fights. This could have been the greatest card of all time, or one of them. One of them. Yeah. Yeah, one of them for sure. And then just to get the news, Brett Akimoto broke it. And man, my heart broke with it. When he was with, he broke it. And then like an hour later, he was with Dana White in that mm-hmm. octagon. And I was like, and now, you know, with the octagon in, the <laughs> yeah, and in like, Vegas, you yeah. get there so fast. Yeah. What the hell was that? Like he was just on, on call, I guess. Yeah. He must live in Vegas. Yeah. He must. He has to. Yeah. Cause that was just, that was wild to me. I was like, how did he show up there so fast? He mm-hmm. just announced that. Mm-hmm. I think, well, he's become Dana White's number one guy. Mm. If Dana White wants to break some fucking news, he's going to Brett. He's going Okamoto. to Brett. Absolutely. He, he, he hates Ariel Hawani so much. I know. I don't know why. Why does he hate Ariel? Well, so because much? he broke the Brock Lesnar news for two hundred. Remember that? He he broke Ariel was the one. Ariel who did was that? the one, and because it was, I guess, the list of people who knew that oh, was no. so fucking short that it like ruined relationships, almost ruined Vince McMahon's relationship with Dana White. I guess. Oh, geez. and it was it ended up blowing up in everybody's face, turned into a giant fucking point. Everyone was pointing fingers at each other. It was it was bad. It was really Ari- bad, I guess. And, and it, it was, was because confirmed? Of, it was confirmed through Ariel. And then uh, Ariel never gave up his source, obviously. But wow. th- that was when Ariel got banned. Do you remember that? Ariel got banned from yes, all UFC I do events. Remember that, that was because yes. of that. Wow. Dana that banned crazy. him because of that. Yeah, it's a little, little bit of MMA history lesson there for you, folks. But yeah, the wild shit. He fucking hates Ariel. Yeah. But anyways, he did an interview with uh, Dana. They broke down everything. Essentially, he was ready to go. He wanted that fight to happen, but, you know, the fucking, the higher-ups in Disney and ESPN personally called him and look, asked him to not do it. Look, Tabor, if, if Disney gives me a call right this second and they say, shut this shit down, mm-hmm. I'm going to listen to Disney. Yeah. When you're getting what? Period. F- when you're getting what? Like, I think it's like $300 million It doesn't matter. It shit. doesn't matter. I don't yeah. Even if they're not paying me, if Disney were to call me up, if Bob, Bob Iger, CEO of Disney, as it sits right now, calls me up and is like, Mace, shut the podcast down. Because, you know, he's got my personal number. <laughs> uh, I would we go, talk yes, time. sir, immediately. And I would I would escort you out of my prop off my property. You don't mess with Disney. That's what I'm trying to say. Oh, you yeah. don't mess with Disney. So, yeah. like, even Dana White, and we know Dana White. Dana White doesn't give a fuck. When oh, he yeah. says that, I, I genuinely believe him because that's who Dana is. Yeah. You know, and and but when Disney tells you, that's just that. And I like that interview with uh, Brett Okamoto because Dana was like, you know, he was talking up ESPN. He's like, this is the greatest thing that's ever happened for business, which it is. Mm-hmm. Like everything Dana was saying, I completely agree with. Yeah, ESPN is the greatest thing that's ever happened to MMA. Oh yeah, you know, uh, you know, in in the, the fact exposure. that Disney, yeah, I mean, Disney does own ESPN. They own ABC and all that. So you put behind, you put money behind the UFC. That, of course, it's a great deal. So I, I'm not I'm not upset about it. I'm not upset with Dana about it. He did everything yeah. he could. But when you get that phone call, dude, it, <laughs> that's it. Game over. Wrap it up. Go home, boys. Because yeah. it's it's not happening. And you could tell he was fighting. He was yeah. fighting tooth and nail to to get to get this fucking fight just to happen to get us some fucking fights. Like, mm-hmm. dude, I've been I'm, I'm like freaking out right now. <laughs> like, I've just been, been withdrawals. Like six weeks with no fights. Like, I are know. you fucking kidding me, dude? After going through some of the best years in MMA history, just these last couple of years, last year's 
Last March, last April, we were getting fucking knockouts every week. Yeah. Remember that shit? Darren Till, Jorge Masvidal, fucking Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, and Anthony Pettis, and then straight into fucking uh, probably a Nganu fight or something <laughs> yeah. like that. Like, it was crazy back then. It was wild. Justin Gaethje versus freaking, remember when he fought Edson Barboza? Oh, my God. That Dude, was a hell was, of a fight. It was week to week to week yep. to week to fucking wild fights, and boy, did I get spoiled. <laughs> Boy, did well, I get spoiled because I feel like we're in the old days where you get fight like I also, every two months. Yeah, and I also felt like this was the big year for UFC because like yes. we were getting a fight card every single week. Yes. It was the greatest thing ever. You turn on ESPN Plus on a Saturday, it didn't matter if it was 2 p.m., 5 p.m., there was always a card. We had guaranteed cards for what was it, 11 or 12 weeks straight? During that time period. And then that one time we were, we were like, oh, yeah, there's not a fight card this weekend. No, there was a fight card. It was mm-hmm. like three weeks before, you know, this whole coronavirus thing happened. But it's just, I really felt like this was the up and up for the UFC. And it is still. Mm-hmm. I think it'll come back harder and stronger than ever, man. Like, yeah. you, uh, and, well, they're the going to have to. No, but the fact that it's going to be the only sport that people are going to yes. watch. It'll there's be the four first people who are clamoring. It doesn't matter what it is, man. People are on YouTube watching marble races. Like, really, they are. Like, it's legit. Yeah. And it's actually kind of entertaining. Like, in all seriousness. Check it out, guys. Yeah, check it out. But um, I'm one of them. That's why I bring it up. Yeah. But 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 what I'm saying is, like, this is a big move. If Dana White can get this done, this this thing coming up that we'll talk about later, but mm-hmm. it's, it's going to be huge. Oh, it's yeah. It's absolutely going to be huge because... Uh, Everyone's going to be watching. It's going to yes. be the only thing on TV, sports-wise. Yes. yes. One one piece of news that did break before all this fiasco, 249, um, it's, a, it's a bit of a sad piece of news. Rose Namajunas did drop out of this fight before it got canceled, yeah. and uh, she did not give a reason for the first couple of days. We had no idea. We didn't know if it was injury or personal problems, more mental problems with her. Like We had no idea. It was all speculation. And then it came out her I believe her manager posted a statement saying that she had two family members that passed away from COVID-19. Yeah. And so she, she was almost felt forced to withdraw at that point. Like it just wasn't safe. And I'm sure she she needs time to grieve. You know, I don't know. She didn't say who died, but I can only assume maybe like grandparents and stuff like that. So, you know, very sad for her. Thoughts and prayers go out to uh, the former champ, you know, with Rose, because that's just, that's terrible piece of news. You you don't want to hear stuff like that, especially in your community. And you you definitely don't want to fight. Knowing no. that too, having yes. two family members die, you're you're not in the right headspace. Yes. Understandably, a hundred percent. But just go and you know take care of yourself. Take that time to yourself. Like fighting is your profession, but it's not everything either. Yes, you know, exactly. It's, it's important to be with family when you can, and you know comfort that. So and she'd be the totally. first person to tell you that too. Yeah. It's just the type of girl she is, you yeah. know. So you know, I mean, when she won the world title against Joanna, what she spent her entire. Talk talking about how the world needs yeah, to be nicer. Be nicer like yeah. So I mean, take example from her. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 She's a good, good person. Yeah. Sad to hear that, but uh, it is. Then the card did get canceled. Yes. And I, I, I believe this news broke before the card even got announced. But uh, Dana White came out and said he bought a fucking island, <laughs> and it's called Fight Island. Fight Which, Island. Tabor, I'm telling you right now, if there are any screenwriters out there, this is a perfect pitch for yeah. a movie. Dude, this is this Mortal Kombat. Evil Overlord. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> Fight Island. You know what I mean? Like, it's dude, he's so gonna have, cra- It's cool. It's, it's so cool. It's dude. awesome. I can't wait. Fight Island. I hope they build a fucking hotel on Fight Island. That would be sick. <laughs> Wouldn't Exclusive that be sick? for uh, UFC fans yeah, and stuff? Yeah, you pay an extra few thousand dollars. Yeah, pay a yeah. few thousand dollars. You get a fucking VIP mm-hmm. treatment out at the island. Yeah, a, it might be Jeffrey Epstein's island, but oh, you know. Well, let's hope not. God. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> they got it on discount already. <laughs> They're oh just fighting in the temple. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, you probably would get it for a discount. That's uh, no, that's no one up. wants that fucking island. No one. That's a fucking that. That thing's probably still being combed right now. Yeah. <laughs> no, but they did buy an island. It might be neighboring oh, yeah, Epsi yeah. Island. Who knows? <laughs> probably, <I'm, laughs> they, there's a lot of islands though. A lot. There's of a lot. Of there's islands. a lot of private islands. And they they're not saying where it is. They're no. not disclosing the location Can at I, all. And I don't but blame you. You know what I will say? I think it's off the West Coast. Oh, well, he did say, well, it's cause, so that's interesting. I mean, there's a say ton that, of islands out there. Yeah, well, he did I'm say sure. that uh, he was going to have all the stuff off the West Coast. Yes. But that I think back then he was talking about the Indian Reservation. I might be wrong. Maybe he was talking about Fight Island already. Yeah, it's just 
but they, but, they were going to have that fight at the Indian reservation. Hear me out on this business wise, right? Why would you go? Why would you send two completely different teams? Why would your backup plan be across country that way? True. And the then go all the way fucking somewhere else the keys or, the, or something. Yeah, yeah. The keys or something in Florida. Um, Epstein's Island was off of Puerto Rico. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. East coast. Well, either way, he's buying a fucking island. Dude, that's a boss move. <laughs> that's like the biggest boss move you could possibly do. Just be like, you know what? Fucking nobody's going to have my fights. Nobody's going to sanction my shit. Well, guess what? Fuck you guys. Fuck coronavirus. I'm buying a goddamn island, bitch. We're going to have international fights. I really do hope, though, that if if this does go through, Fight Island does go through, he needs to be testing people before they go. Oh, Yeah. Well, I think like they're that's testing people already. To do. Yeah, but I mean, test them before they get on a get on a plane and fly over there. Yeah, well, so you know. getting a little off topic, but fuck it. It's MMA News 420 episode anyways. <laughs> yeah. So uh, there was a fighter that tested positive. It was uh, Lyman Good. He was going to fight on 249. He was going to fight uh, not the new well, revised card, but the original 249 card. Mm-hmm. He did drop out a few weeks ago before all this bullshit, for all this crazy stuff. And... Uh, Nobody knew what it was for, but he did come out recently and said it was because he tested positive for COVID and yeah. him and his wife both tested positive for COVID apparently. Which is probably why Disney said, pull the plug. Yeah. It they been. knew about that. It could have been. They you knew know, about that. Nobody no knew, one knew about, about that. It. Yeah. Nope. But Disney knew. It's yeah. Disney's company. They know. And that's yeah, why they're that like, no, I'll pull the plug. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense mm-hmm. actually. Now that we, now that you say it like that. So that doesn't shock me, but, uh, at first, when all this news broke out about the the card being canceled, man, I was just fucking pissed. Yeah, I was not happy. There, but there's nothing you could do about it. Like, so it's nope. just like being pissed at the air. <laughs> so it's like being exactly because it's no one's fault. It's just, exactly well, it's somebody's fault. It's well, some, so yeah. apparently, <laughs> I don't want to get into all that, but you know, it's someone's fault. Yeah. Apparently, uh, I just thought I was just blaming Disney. I was like, fucking corporate bastard, just fucking no, ruining I everything. One people be it. scared, but no, dude, Gavin Newsom and Diane Feinstein. We're calling Bob Iger at Disney and mm-hmm. calling the CEO of, I don't know the CEO of ESPN. I don't know who runs that shit. I don't know their name. But they were calling them both lobbying for them to shut the UFC down, apparently. Yeah, so probably. this is the government telling the UFC, no. Fuck you guys. Even on even on this shit. By pressuring but we the don't corporate know. We don't know all entities. The, That's we don't a little know fucked the, up. It's not, though. It's not. By, by, by pressuring the corporate... Disney and ESPN, like well, you're, maybe, maybe the government's going to pressure. But we them don't know. Maybe UFC shit. was Dana White testing fighters. Maybe he wasn't. Maybe he was. And then Disney yeah. was like, or whatever Newsom or whoever was like, Nah, dude. Like you're not going to have these if you're not going to be testing people. And then they're going to go back home and spread that in the airplanes and everything. Like, I get it. It's it's a high risk situation. I get it because like, it's California. But yeah, they're yeah. dealing with a, a, a hundreds got, of thousands of The thing about of LA County cases. is it's just yeah, people stacked on top of each other. Except they didn't build up for some reason. No, they built out. They built out. Yeah, yeah, it's not like New York. Nope. Fucking yeah, crazy, crazy man. I was really pissed off when I heard that because <laughs> I already, I already really don't like Diane Feinstein. You know that news came out that she fucking did the insider trading bullshit with those Republicans, and yeah, it's like come on, guys. I know. I'm just sick of corrupt people. It's what they do. It's just, and it's, and it, it's why I can't watch boxing. Really, is because you just know that just <laughs> fucked up. It is. It's like politics. Hey, unless you're it's Tyson Fury, boxers. you just yeah. you just shut that shit down. You end the fight. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That rematch got postponed. Apparently. Yeah, of course. Oh yeah. yeah, you knew it was. And they didn't even give a date. And and I'm telling you right now, there's there's going to be no international fight week this year. You think so? I don't. Think well, I don't think. I don't think, dude, I don't I don't think fans. Think. So that's something we got to talk about. How long until fans can start going to fights again? Uh, Eighteen months. Really? You think that long? I do. Not because like I'm like. Okay, the, this is a tricky subject because obviously the virus, in all seriousness, is mm-hmm. a real threat, and it yeah, does take. It's a, well, it's, like, a, it's, it's definitely a real thing, and it is killing people. But I'm not. I'm not like petrified of it by any means. Mm-hmm. Me neither. Right? And it, because we, you can't live in fear all the time. Like, oh my god, I'm gonna die at any mm-hmm. second. You can't. So with that said. I think it'll be 18 months because that's a lot of people. I mean, yeah. imagine a stadium. What 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 is a Century Link field hold? 60, 50,000 people? A lot, yeah. I mean, not and that how, many compared to how fucking How contagious Ohio, but... the coronavirus is just because of its contagiousness. I mean, imagine you get 15,000 people sick at a game. Yeah. At a freaking game, dude. And now you got to deal with that all over in Seattle because five people out of those 50,000 had coronavirus and spread it to 5,000 people. Yeah, and of those no. five thousand people, three of them might die. 
Yeah. So, but at the same time, it is a it, it is a maybe a hundred kills three is probably too low. Yeah. But I know, you know. it's just it's so tricky, man. I don't know. It's I don't it's, know. it's it's scary. But I'm thinking twelve to eighteen months. I, this isn't a political podcast, and I'm getting weird, but fucking, it's just scary because I don't like the fact. That fucking, they're telling us to be scared of a virus that has technically still killed less people than the flu. And did you notice that the fucking flu deaths just, just dropped? <laughs> like fucking, I have just not. Stopped. I haven't noticed. Dude, haven't if you watched. look at if you look at the death of the flu, like there were there was already like a lot of people died already yeah. this year of the flu. Like I think it was upward of like thirty thousand people or something like that. Like it was a lot. Oh yeah, of the flu. That's that's every year. Yeah, and then mm-hmm. the then the fucking Rona comes around and the flu death just fucking just stopped. So yeah. Everything's Rona now. But everything's gotta, Rona. They're just blaming it. it on Rona. Yeah, but look at the scale for an entire year. Coronavirus has been here what two months? Yeah, and it's killed over twenty thousand people. The flu doesn't kill people that fast. Yeah, it does. It killed eighty thousand people in three months. One, two years ago. Well, yeah, two years ago, and, and that it was, was an just as bad last one time. Year. But it, we're talking. No, there's no way in a you three month period it killed eighty. I don't know. I think people. it was. Well, it was that really was over bad two year. years ago. Yeah, it was but it was over a twelve month period. So we'll that, that's the difference. Like, I 80,000 people? No, dude, it was three months. There's no way. In two years ago. Yeah, dude, it was the winter. The it's cold. You got to think, this is flu Are you season. Are worldwide We're, or just United States? I'm talking United States, what? brother. Yeah. 80,000 people in the winter months, the flu season of 2018. Dude, it was bad. And we didn't fucking shut shit down for this, dude. The UFC didn't stop. That's what I'm trying to get at. It's like, we're like the, Dana White was going to fucking find a way to make this happen with no people and minimize the risk, and they still shut it down. That's why I'm so happy with this fight island, because this fight island feels like it's fucking checkmate. That's what it feels like to me. Well, on the, yeah, UFC's, definitely. On the UFC's half, yeah. at least. So we'll see. I don't know, man. I'm, I'm, I don't like the fact that we are have shut down the entire fucking world over a disease that has... Not as bad as the flu two years ago. We didn't give a shit. That's all I'm trying to say. I'm not saying that this disease is bad. I'm not belittling the deaths that have happened or anything like that. Like, a lot of people have died, and it's very tragic. Wow, that's... You're right. Yeah. According to uh, Stat News, the CDC... Yeah. 80,000 people died of flu last winter Mm -hmm. in the U.S. Highest death toll in 40 years. Yeah, it's fucking wild, dude. And they shut down this shit over essentially a flu fucking pandemic. Like, brother... (laughs) <laughs> like huh. the world is fucking mad right now, man. It's just mad. It's just wild. It's it's wild. I feel for Dana White. I really do because he had no choice but to comply. He had no choice but to comply with Bob Iger and Disney and all them because they run the pay per view. If your pay per view provider is out, you cannot. Have a show. Nope. How are you going to sell the pay-per-views? You going to set up a deal on fucking one day's notice when your provider just pulls out? No, he had no choice. He They had him essentially by the balls. And uh, let's get into this clip here pretty soon about uh, Fight Island. This shit is real. So this isn't just some rumor like we've been hearing the last few weeks with 249. Like nobody knows what was going to happen with 249. And then we're just getting rumor here, rumor there, rumor there. We never even got a location. Nobody knows. It's going to be on some Indian reservation. Oh, Fight Island. Like, fucking nobody knows. But apparently, Fight Island is real. Let's play this clip. When will Fight Island actually be in a position where they can host events? Well, that's hap- See, that's why I'm telling all, all of my guys not to worry. Because Fight Island's going to happen. It's obviously still being, um, you know... All the infrastructure is being built right now and, and, and get, getting put in place. As we get closer to that, then I'll start figuring out booking fights, getting guys ready. Plus, I can ship guys over there earlier, huh. and they can start training over there on the island. Um, so once that's all in place, you know, you're looking at like a month. Huh. So that, that's all coming together. It's all going to happen. Um, I, could, I could go next week, but, you know. This is what it is, and I'll see, you, I'll see you in a month. What the fuck was that weird music that just popped up? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, ESPN, MMA, all right, whatever. There's ominous music in the background. Yeah, just, what just, is, just making like, it all dramatic. No, but essentially the things that I took from that clip right there was he's got infrastructure being built already. Right. So he's he So he needs something to house the fights in. It doesn't have to be big. You know, 
Who knows if he's even going to allow people to fight Island one day? You know, maybe he builds an arena there. That would be fucking sick. That'd be so sick. That would be yeah. so sick. Build well, again, like your a hotel, own arena. a casino, mm-hmm. everything. Like mm-hmm. you could literally have and fight he Island. Yeah, he oh, could do of it. Course. And do, and all he would take is two phone calls to Fertitta Brothers to get some investors. Yep. They fucking got all that shit set up. Oh hell yeah! Because yeah. you'd pay top dollar to fly out there. Yeah, I mean it would be up for the richer people, of course, yeah. because there's no way. <laughs> I, w- I would be able to afford something like that, but it'd no. be cool, though. It'd be freaking cool. <laughs> no. You know? Yeah. A hell of a vacation spot. Yeah. It'd be pretty awesome. It really would. If, if they opened Fight Island to the public, I'd be so fucking happy. Because I wouldn't go to Vegas no more. I'd be like, Vegas is cool and all, but... I love Vegas, man. I'm still going to Vegas. It's I, so cheap to vacation. Not for fights. <laughs> not no, for not fights when you got fights, Fight no. Island. <laughs> no, but it's awesome to vacation at. It's yeah. so cheap, dude. It's nice. You can go for a couple hundred bucks, hotel yeah. and everything. Like, it's awesome. Yeah, it's nice. Well, Fight Island confirmed 100%. It's real. It's not a conspiracy theory, guys. Um, can't wait. There's a lot of fights you could have on Fight Island. I'm talking international fight weeks. I'm talking mega cards, super fights. Yep. There's a lot of fights, a lot of potential for Fight Island. I hope this isn't something that's just here for Corona. Like, obviously, I think it is the checkmate to coronavirus. It of is course. the checkmate to all this. It, it's what will keep the sport going. But this needs the care. This is cool enough. It needs to carry on after all this coronavirus shit. Right. It really needs to, and I hope it does. But uh, news did break about mid to late last week. We got a card coming up. It's a pretty awesome card. Yeah, yeah. And so, this is this isn't. I just want to paraphrase. It, mm-hmm. it isn't an official card yet. No, it's a proposed card. No. Well, they did have the official UFC 250 in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Yes. But they had not made any announcements of changes or locations or anything like that. They've just been in the dark about that until about last week when they announced that 250 will completely revamped, new location, undisclosed. They will not tell anybody. Everyone's speculating Fight Island. You know, maybe that's enough time mm-hmm. to at least get some fights at Fight Island. Well, think about this. Red Okamoto asked him. He goes, Dana... How much time do you think it'll take till mm-hmm. we're ready for Fight Island? He goes, mm-hmm. about a month. Give me a month. Yeah. Give me a month. It's going to happen 6th. on Fight Island. Yeah. May 9th. I hope so. I hope it happens in the fucking sand. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't the know sand, about that. sand on the beach. Oh, there's tiki <laughs> torches around. <laughs> just dudes with flamethrowers instead of a cage just holding them in with fire. We got to we gotta talk about the card, though. Yeah. Let's and, talk about it. Because this, this is just, it's so stacked. Yeah. Now, this one would be one of the best of all time, if yeah. not the best. If not the best. So, I mean, this is top to bottom, incredible fights. Let's start at the bottom. Yes. Let's start at the bottom. So, Bryce Mitchell versus Charles Rosa. What the fuck? That's your first fight? That's the very first fight Dude, of the Dude, that could be co-main event on ESPN prelims. Mm-hmm. Easily. Bryce yep. Mitchell, thug nasty, him fucking self. Oklahoma boy, born and bred. <laughs> fucking got that rebel flag on his chest. He don't give a shit. I don't think he does. Oh, I was going to say, wow. I don't think he does. He's just that an awesome crazy. He's just an awesome redneck guy from Oklahoma. He's just a typical Oklahoma guy. I love him. He's I'm a huge fan. So he is getting a huge test, a massive test with Charles Rosa. I cannot wait for that fight if it actually happens. Who knows? Yeah. But then to straight after that, Vicente Luque versus Nico Price, that's your first, that's your that's first the, two fights of the night. Yeah. Okay, whoever, if this it's was gonna like, be a barn burner, yeah. If this mm-hmm. if this card was like one of those regular cards in Vegas, and there's all those fucking empty seats, you know, I'd want to find whoever had that empty fucking seat and, beat that and fucking them. slap the shit out of them yeah. for skipping that fight. Of course, like, are you fucking kidding me? Why would you do that? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, a fight like this is never the second fight of the entire night. Never. With the early prelims. Never. That's a co-main event on a fight night somewhere anywhere in the world. It yes. doesn't matter. Absolutely. Easily. And then the next fight. Uriah Hall, Jacare Souza. What? Are you, are you kidding? Another, <laughs> this, is, it, this could be a co-main. Yes. For an ESPN card. Easily, yes. anywhere. Like, not a, not a, not a pay-per-view maybe, but obviously one of the fight nights. This is a fight past prelim fight. A fight past pre Jacare Souza. That's so wild. Versus fucking Uriah Hall. That if this is card crazy. actually does happen, we got to watch this thing from top to top bottom to bo- here. It, Top to bottom. Yeah. Easily. Easily. I'm not missing a single one of these fights. Nor if, am I. No yeah. way. No. So, Carlos Sparza, Michelle Watterson. Just, That's an awesome fight. <laughs> an awesome fight. It's crazy. <laughs> just back to back to back to back fucking great fucking I know. fights, honestly. And then uh, Alexi Olenek versus, uh, oh, you Fa- know. Oh, Fabricio Verdum. Are you yeah. fucking kidding Former me? Former heavyweight what? champion, just the jiu-jitsu god. You know, one of the goats of the heavyweight division. Just insane. 
Top five. Easily, he's top five greatest heavyweights of all time. Submitted Kane. Submitted yep. fucking uh, uh, Fedor. You know, just, the list goes on. The list goes on with that, man. Let's move on. There's too many good fights. Then this back-to-back heavyweight bangers. Jorgen mm-hmm. DeCastro versus Greg Hardy. Greg Hardy's that, gonna get uh, another fight here. Another first yeah. round knockout, probably. Honestly, probably. Like, let's be, <laughs> let's it's be either real. that or uh, he's in for a world of hurt. Oh yeah, because that guy's uh, no fucking joke. No, he's not. Yeah. Castro's no joke. Yeah, he 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 looks like a pot belly, just mm-hmm. regular dude out there. He can he can still throw, but he, oh yeah, and he's got really good technique. He's got really good hands. This will be a nice little test for Greg Hardy. Like he, I'm not gonna lie, dude. Greg Hardy did not look bad dirt versus Volkov. I no, thought he at didn't. Least. No, you know if he didn't break his he hand, he lasted the whole uh, the uh, the whole duration of the fight. And so. I don't know what round he broke his hand in, but I believe it was early. It was either the first or second. So he fought Something the rest was of the wrong. fight with a broken yeah. hand. Something was wrong with his hand, definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you could tell he just couldn't throw. It wasn't his, the same. Yeah, he yeah. couldn't throw his power hand. He nope. was just throwing check hooks and left and left jabs. He doesn't know how to throw with a broken hand. He's just he's never had to feel that before. Yeah, you know he's never been put in one of those situations. But if he wants to be a champion, which I, it's heavyweight division, dude. If you land yeah. that right hand once, you never fucking know with any of these nope. guys. So he could he could do it. You know, he could definitely do it, but uh, he's got to learn how to fucking throw that right hand, even if it's compromised. Like, look yeah. at Paul Felder. Yeah. He almost won that Mike Perry fight with a broken with arm. A broken, with yeah. a broken arm. And that Michael, think about that Michael Johnson versus freaking Tony Ferguson fight. He broke his arm, and he was still in that fight the whole time. He was still in that fight. Yeah, he lost. But that was the loss that set him up on one of the greatest fucking winning streaks of all time in the right. division. So, yeah. All man, right, this fight. Wild. Wild. Donald Cerrone and Anthony Pettis. This is a perfect matchmake. This is a matchmake in heaven. Dude. Yes, it is. This fight is so awesome. Both of them are coming off a loss. You mm-hmm. know, uh, Donald Cerrone with, you know, Cowboy. Uh, who did Anthony Pettis lose to? Pettis just lost on he that same lost. card. So it was it was uh, McGregor, actually. You said Cowboy. Uh, what? You, you said Donald Cerrone lost to Cowboy. Uh, Donald Cerrone. Oh, yeah, <laughs> lost to McGregor or whatever. Yeah, he sorry. lost to McGregor. Yeah. But he, on that same card, he lost to Diego Fierra. Oh, for yeah, Hera, yeah. Submitted right. him in the the second round, I believe. That was a good fight. Anthony Pettis, bo- well, both these guys really. Yeah, they're just they're just these guys that they they both need to come back fight. They're both probably on the back nine of their career. Anthony Pettis, yeah, he may be younger than Cerrone for sure, but the man's got a lot of miles in the octagon. Uh, of man. course, he's yeah. got a lot of hours, a lot of tape on the guy. They the guy there's a book to beat Anthony Pettis. And it's either you got to be fucking. You, you, honestly, you just got to be a freak. <laughs> it's the only way to beat him. You got to be a freak. And same, Donald Cerrone same, is that. Same could be said for Donald Cerrone as well. Yes. Too. Yes. You know? I mean, he we we have known this. He does not start hot. Mm-hmm. He finishes fights, but he he's not he's not a he's a slow starter. Yeah. You know. It's a and great. That's where McGregor capitalized. Yeah, it's a great matchup because Anthony Pettis most definitely will start fast. <clears throat> He'll get right in your face real quick. Like we all remember that first round of that Tony Ferguson fight. Yeah. When he fucking brought it to him, you know, if you can survive that first round, with Anthony, you know, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a rough fight for him, yeah. especially with Cowboy. Cowboy fucking puts it on second or third. So great fight. Can't wait. That's an ESPN main event. Like. This is an, this is easily one of the greatest cards of all time. Just right there, if you stopped it, yeah. if that was your main event on a fight night, that's that's a great fight. That's one of the greatest fight nights of all time. Easily, we're not even a main card yet. No, we're not. Yeah. Calvin Cater, Jeremy Stevens, fuck, two toughest guys in the entire featherweight division fighting each other. Essentially, yeah. You know, you got both those guys march forward. Both those guys have amazing boxing. Calvin Cater, I would probably give the slight edge to Calvin Cater on his boxing. It's so clean. It's so good. Well, he goes rounds with professional boxers, apparently, in his gym. Like, straight up, like, real, like, WA champion, like, WBA champions. Like, goes rounds with these guys. And wow. So, his boxing is amazing. It's really, really good. But he's got good kicks as well. Yeah. So, this guy's a very well-rounded fighter, but he really loves to throw fucking hands. And he's got some of the cleanest hands in featherweight division. This is a great fight. That's a great fight. Francis <laughs> Ningon <laughs> versus Jarzinho Rosenstrike. <sighs> Again, should be a main event somewhere. Yeah, really should be. I mean, it like should have been. This, yeah. Well, yeah, it should have yeah. been. God, this is going to be fun. I can't wait. Like, I'm almost speechless. Like, right fucking there. Like, are you kidding me? We're not even, we're not even in the title fights yet. Nope. <laughs> We're not even into the title fights yet. And we're already is like one of the greatest cards ever. Like that's like a fucking, this is way better than any Conor McGregor pay-per-view we will ever get. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so much better. So much more stacked from the very first fucking fight. Probably. Yep. 
Francis Ngannou, Jarzinho, Rosenstrike. That's don't blink extraordinary. I don't want to. I don't want to jinx it and say it could be Derek Lewis. I really don't think it could be that. I think Francis has woken the fuck up from whatever sleep Stipe put him in, and he's the scariest guy in the heavyweight division. Easy as that. Oh yeah, I I see Ngannou winning this fight. Yeah, first round. Um, yeah, of course. Yeah, but it's gonna be fun if that's not the case. Yeah, and these guys end up throwing yeah. for three rounds. For three rounds. Like, oh my be- god. It's going to be so much fun yeah, it, if it, as a fan to watch because these guys can these guys have some serious knockout power. If it turns into a Derek Lewis, Francis Ngannou too, I, I swear to God, Francis will never get another title shot in the UFC ever again. And he'll be number one contender forever. Yeah. <laughs> he will. Like, if he stinks up, has another three-round stinker, they might give him the title shot if he wins. But if he loses, that guy's fucked. He's never getting another title shot. I, I don't see it. I think he's past it. He seems like a different man. Every time we watch him mm-hmm. fight, I think he's been entertaining. So mm-hmm. I, yeah, I don't, those I don't last three it. knockouts, <laughs> they've just been phenomenal. Yeah, phenomenal. So I'm very excited to see his next fight. I was so excited for that main event, and we all knew that wasn't going to go five fucking rounds. Like, what the fuck is that doing? To me? Make that co-main, dude. Mm. Put up a. F- I don't remember who was on that card. I don't even remember who the co-main event was. I think it was a. Uh, I think it was a. Uh, uh, Cody Garbrandt versus uh, Do- Dos Anjos or uh, Pedro? No, Munoz. No, not Pedro Munoz. Uh, he got knocked out by Marlon Moraes before the title shot. I can't remember his name. He's Aljamain f- Sterling. No, he's, he's a. <laughs> <laughs> this is so disrespectful because he's so good. I don't remember, dude. <laughs> I don't remember your name. He's the Brazilian guy. Got knocked out by Marlon Moraes. They were both number one, number two before Marlon got the title shot against Henry. I don't remember his name. Rafael Sanzo. There you go. Can't believe I couldn't remember. Oh, Sanzo. <laughs> okay, Sanzo. Yeah. Rafael Sanzo versus Cody Garbrandt. That was supposed there to happen, go. I believe. You got it, though. So, uh, yeah, finally. From Only memory, took me too. <laughs> took me, me, I would have been doing this. I would have been typing, <laughs> Googling, who is uh, the second? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, uh, Nengano, I can't wait for that fight. Let's hope Let's hope that sticks through. First title, first title fight on the card announced. Amanda Nunes versus Felicia Spencer. So, that was staying on 250 for May 9th. Women's featherweight title bout. Amanda Nunes' first defense of her featherweight, featherweight yep. title. But we should talk about the news that just came yep. out today. Yep. You know, uh, Amanda Nunes essentially is out, Tabes. Yep. She said, not enough time. Yep. She needs she needs more time to train. And uh, she said, maybe in June. I'm calling a little bit of bullshit on that. Just because she's known about this fight. Probably two months before Rona even was a problem. Right, but here's the thing. And dude. it is even Rona, Rona might not even be a factor. Right. Maybe she just isn't ready. Well, or or think about this. Like, this is a real possibility. She's a brand new mother, right? Yeah. Or, they're, or they're about to have a child. Have, have, have they had I, it yet? I, I, I think she's probably only three, four months okay. pregnant. But still, you know, you probably, I, you probably want to take every precaution to make sure that your pregnant wife yeah. doesn't, you know, get the coronavirus. Yeah. And, and she could be scared. Careful. And you know what, dude? She's a champ champ. She, she can. can. She, she has every right to sit out right now. Mm-hmm. She doesn't have to fight. Yeah. She, she doesn't. doesn't. I mean, what if, if, if Steve, Steve doesn't, why does she? Yeah. Because she's known about this fight yeah. for at least two or three months now. And, yeah. and she waits a whole month out to drop out. So I'm not going to shit on her for that. Mm. No, well, she's yeah, still, no. she's still the champ champ. Of I course. still have so much respect for that woman for everything that she's done. Like she's a fucking beast. And if she saw me in public, <laughs> she she'd fuck me up. Probably <laughs> not. Probably <laughs> like, you, you talking shit it on the a, internet. And it is a hundred and ten percent. She would beat the shit out of you <laughs> and me together in five other dudes in a room. <laughs> probably. Okay. Yeah. All at the same time. It's like, it's like the scene, you know, in a uh, rogue one yeah. where Vader's like killing all the rebels, <laughs> dude, I'm trying to scatter on out of the window. I'm like crawling through a window trying to get out before she kills me. Yeah. Honestly. No, dude. Yeah. She'd wreck all of us easily. I mean, she's, she seems like a lovely person, but she, yeah. Would kill us. Yeah, I, I was very intrigued with that matchup against Felicia Spencer. Felicia's a fucking savage on the ground. Oh yeah, savage. I think it, when that that's that where the fight, fight has to go if she wants any success. Yeah, you know, I mean, Amanda Nunes. Yeah, she's good on the ground, but she's so good on the fucking feet. That she's gonna want to obviously keep it there after she saw Cyborg. The way Cyborg was fucking Felicia Spencer up, she knows that she could repeat that. Yeah. 
So Felicia Spencer, really the only chance she had was to take that fight down to the ground. And she's a phenom. Literally, her nickname is The Phenom. The Phenom. So, you know, she would have a lot of success there, I think. So that was a very dangerous matchup, in my opinion, for uh, Nunes, especially on the ground game. Yeah, and you know what? We're going to get that fight. That fight ain't going anywhere. Yeah, it's That's just the cool postponed. thing. That's the cool thing about that fight is you know it's not going anywhere because that is the number one contender. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad she got it over Megan Anderson. Yeah, me too. Because and, she and did I beat think her. Right, exactly, and uh, it's just it's plain as day. So this this fight's not going anywhere. It's to be expected. And dude, we kind of need some fights after this. Yeah, <laughs> after this crazy card. Yeah. Well, so one yeah. thing I wanted to mention earlier, and I got sidetracked. Uh, the the UFC has a deal with ESPN. They have to get so many fight cards every per year. year. Uh huh. And now we've had to cancel and postpone so many. Do we might get multiple fights per week? Oh, that'd be awesome. Wouldn't that be? I'm just in. have a couple weeks of where we're just getting fucking just bangers Saturday, after Sunday. Bangers. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Just a two-day Saturday, event. Sunday, fucking even do a Tuesday or Wednesday show. Who gives a shit? Do it anywhere. It'd be I'll so show awesome. Up. Yeah. It would be so awesome. Yeah. It, yeah, it's a possibility. Saturday, Sunday, or fr- don't do Friday for me. It's don't, a possibility. Don't do it, UFC. I work Friday night. Yeah, I think they needed like 42 fight cards for the year or something like that. I don't, I don't remember the exact specific number of the deal, but it was like 42 or 40-something, and we only have like 30-something weeks left, and there's been like less than 10 cards well, this whole year. Maybe 10. No, there's been at least 10. Well, you got to think. So we got McGregor, 248, two, no, 247, 248. Yeah, but all the fight cards happened. in between. So there was only a few. There's ah, there six, was like, six or seven. Yeah, but there was a fight every week. Okay, up until so I'll the say shutdown. 15, 15 cards. Yeah. You know, we got but there's still 30 a lot. something yeah, weeks Yeah, there's left. still a lot. To, yeah. to go out, though, nonetheless. It's either but, we get fights every single weekend till the end of the year, or we are gonna we might even get a few weeks with multiple fight cards. Well, and if this, if this thing keeps going into the summertime, we're not having football. 11 yeah. on 11? Are you kidding me? They're not going to do that. No. With officials and everyone else on the sidelines yeah. standing. So if this thing becomes an issue, there's going to be nothing on Sundays. Well, so what do you they do? Wouldn't, they, they, wouldn't do they wouldn't do football games. Like, isn't the MLB going to do uh, controlled games? In yeah, Arizona that's the or something. the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. There's just no fans going. So well, all their profit there is gone. But you don't think the NFL would do the same? No. Dude, they're going to let people fight in an octagon but not where the NFL? You, where are you going to make your money? It's different. Because of ticket sales? Yeah, exactly. There's no ticket sales. Yep, How are you going to pay the UFC eating that too. Oh, pay-per-view. Pay-per-view, dude. Yep, There's the difference. That's the only way so they're you're making gonna have money. To pay, yeah, you're going to have to pay top fucking dollar to watch the NFL. Or they're doubling their advertising prices for the fucking... For TV, it depends if people want to pay those advertising. Mm-hmm. Some people don't. Want to, a know? lot of people won't, especially in this economy right now, the way things are. It's just wild. No, about. NFL will be a script uh, subscription service if they have it this year. Be be ready for that, dude. You're gonna have to pay like 250 oh, bucks to watch it. the NFL this year. <laughs> I'm not paying yeah. it. That's for damn sure. Because if no one if no one's showing up, that's no revenue. I mean, that's zero revenue. If Dana White came out right now and was like, dude, pay 250 dollars, you get every pay per view for free. I'd be like. Okay. Duh. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I'm doing that shit, dude. I could spend. I'd spend fucking 120 dollars a month if you had two pay per views every month for the rest of the month this year. Yeah. Honestly, I'd do it. No, of course. Honestly, I would. Yeah. 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 It's just. I'm just crazy. <laughs> that's I how guess. bad we yeah. need fights. Yeah. yeah. That's, honestly, <laughs> that's how bad, bad we miss it. <laughs> yeah. It is awesome. Like you. You know, uh, one thing this really has done, it's put a lot of things in perspective. Yeah, it really has. Of like how lucky and how fortunate we are, because we don't know. Yeah. You know, we don't know, but like everything could be shut down in an instant and all the things that we love, like uh, mixed martial arts and watching people compete in whatever sport it is can all be taken away from us like yeah. that. Yeah. You know, and I, I get it. It's like, you know, death as well is the same thing, but it's, it's wild. It's real mm-hmm. crazy, man. Cause it, uh, it puts a lot of things in perspective. So when it does come back, when it does appreciate it, yeah. respect it and just like be like, wow, we are, we are really fortunate to have all this stuff. <laughs> yeah, and all you, know. you and all you people out there watching, don't be so fucking douchey in public. <laughs> that is use true. this time to reflect. Yeah, that's <laughs> okay. Yeah, just calling you guys out there. You know who you are. You know. Yeah. The next title fight. There's three title fights on this card, by the way. Really? So, next title fight: Henry Cejudo versus Dominic Cruz. So, yes, also sir. some news. Jose Aldo is out of that fight. Yeah, of course. I haven't heard anything as to exactly why, but I do believe it has something to do with visas in Brazil. I don't know. Like, Brazil might be in complete lockdown. Like, you can't get out. Something like that. That could very well be the and case. And that could be the case. Mm-hmm. I think that's what it is. It's something like that. I just, I, I just, I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. But Jose Aldo is out. 
once again, all Joe Sterling, I understand. Technically, he's still recovering from an injury. But Pieter Jan, my man's getting fucking fucked. Yeah. He's just getting just screwed. Who gives a shit about that guy? You know what? You know, I, I... I had jokingly texted you <laughs> mm-hmm. about this incident, you know, when we were talking about, or not incident, but this this fight matchup. I mean, I like the fight matchup. You know, I, I, I get it to a certain extent, but at the same time, it's like, dude, Peter Yan, Petri Yan, whatever, and, and Aljamain Sterling, they, they both deserve, and, and yes, whatever, more one than the other, okay, whatever, I don't care. Have that debate amongst yourselves, but they deserve a sh- title shot over Dominic Cruz. Yes. When's the last time the dude fought? Two two and a half years two ago, and, half years and he ago? lost in a title fight. Yes, it Against was Cody, Cody Garbrandt. Garbrandt. Yeah, but he got completely outclassed in that fight. Mm-hmm. We all have to remember that Cody Garbrandt, Dominic Cruz, Dominic Cruz. Well, he was like pulling. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. was pulling some Matrix shit. I'll never forget yeah. that fight. Yeah, that was the last fight I ever watched at uh, <laughs> uh, Hooters. That was the last fight mm-hmm. I've ever. That's the last time I've been to the restaurant. That last but, last fight I watched at Hooters was Steep A versus DC Two. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> oh, people were freaking the fuck out. When I go to Buffalo out. Wild Wings now. I just like it better. It's honestly. just, you got to show up you gotta right show up when the early, early prelims start. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, and they charge you a cover too, mm-hmm. which sucks. Especially yeah. when you got five people, you're like, it's fun 25 though. bucks. Oh, yeah, it's fun. Yeah, I don't do it every time, but it is fun to do it. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Well, But heck, anyway, nonetheless, yeah. Dominic Cruz, yeah, like two and a half years ago. He does not Doesn't deserve, deserve this it. title. So why do we go from Jose Aldo, where there's already controversy, to now Dominic Cruz? Like it's it, like, uh, come on, just give it to a title contender. What are we doing here? I don't say I don't this like a it. lot about fighters, especially because I have. So, I, I don't want to say I have so much respect for them. Like blah blah blah. I'm just. I don't want to sound like I'm gurgling them. Right. But you, it seems like he's just d- ducking these guys. I don't have any better words for it. I just I don't know what else to say. It or, seems like he's ducking the best guys in the division when you're taking these. Like Jose Aldo fucking lost to Marais. Uh-huh. Yeah, I thought he won that fight. Yeah, and so he, did and I, he yeah. should have on the books. Like, let's be real. If the judges didn't suck in MMA, and we all know they do, he probably would have won that fight mm-hmm. and should have. But he still fucking lost, and they were gonna give him the shot. See, I'm more. And he was okay. ranked six. Yeah, I was more okay with the Jose Aldo one. I've always been on that on that wagon where that fight. I didn't hate. Yeah. I understood it because I had Aldo win in that fight. I yeah, thought it against was the number one guy. Against yeah. the number one guy. But then they go from that, which is controversial to some. And I and I do agree in a lot of ways. Like, I get it. Your point. Absolutely. He did technically lose on paper. How do you give this guy a title shot? And he's only had one fight at Bantamweight. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, That's another one. On top That's of another that. big yeah. yeah. You know, even though he, he was a legend in featherweights for so many years. I mean, you're talking all the way back to WEC years. Like... The, the guy fought for a, for a very long time. He was a badass. But I, I just, I, I don't know. I don't know, I guess, what I'm trying to say here is just it, it irritates me that they went from that to Dominic Cruz. To something worse, yeah, in to my Yeah, to something opinion. that's yeah, it's more, more egregious. egregious. Yeah. Yep, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It yeah. really is. I, and don't get me wrong. I love Dominic Cruz. I love the guy. Not only is he a great commentator, he's extremely entertaining oh, dude, on the mic, off yeah. the camera, everything. He's a great shit talker. I'm yep. a big fucking fan. But if he fought a Pieter Jan and beat a Pieter Jan, then I wouldn't give a shit. Oh, I would be all on board. You know, if, he beat, exactly. if he beat him and he beat him decisively, mm-hmm. he, he gets next shot. Yeah. But to come back after two and a half years, while all these guys are proving themselves every six to eight months, just come back and just get a title shot. It's he just, needs to take a fight. Plain and simple. Yeah, you know? really, it's it's yeah. as easy as that. He just he needs to take a fight. Yeah, it doesn't mean he you doesn't, don't. It doesn't mean you don't like Dominic Cruz either. I mean, yeah. you know, he's uh, he's a big name in the sport. I mean, mm-hmm. I get the fight, but you can't just leapfrog like that. I hate when that happens. Yeah, and it, and it doesn't mean that he's well, not one of the greatest of all time of in course. that division. Yeah, because he probably is still in maybe the consensus greatest bantamweight of all time. He's definitely up there. Yeah, you know how many title defenses does he have? Who knows? Mm-hmm. He's got a lot. He's beaten some of the greats. TJ, DJ, blah, 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 yeah. blah. The list goes fucking on. Like he's definitely one of the greatest. But I just don't want to see him shoved into a title shot no. against Henry. because, no. And this is no disrespect to Dominic Cruz, but we all know, uh, as of now, that's the easier fight than a Pieter Jan and an Aljamain Right, Sterling and it's not, even, it's not even necessarily the easier fight. It's just it the smarter fight. Yes. I would much rather take a guy who's... I don't give a fuck who it is. I don't care if it's McGregor. I don't care who. 
you take a guy after two and a half years off who's dealing with injuries, who's been plagued with injuries, that's a smart fight. Yeah. That's a smart fight. You're going to go straight for the fucking injured whatever he has. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I would do, at least. That's what I, I mean, would do. It, it's, a smart, it's, a, it's a smart fight on paper, but there's people who deserve it more. And I think yes. we see that at the same time as fans. Yes. We also see that, okay, hold on. Petra Young, Petra Young, and Aljamain Sterling, they both deserve a title shot or a number one title contender fight yes. in, instead of Dominic Cruz and that's, you know, in this instance. That's what, if this cause, who fucking knows with Rona? Because all these cards you got to take with a grain of salt now. But they did announce freaking Jan versus Marais in Kazakhstan for the main event. That ain't happening. You Well, Fight Island, international That'll fights. That'll happen. Yes. So Fight Island, you never know. Maybe it's, maybe it's not a main event. You know, maybe it's a fucking co-main or something. Maybe it's on pay-per-view. Who knows? But they're still shafting my man. Put him in a title shot. He's way more deserving than Dominic Cruz. And I just, I, I really think it just comes down to Henry Cejudo's thinking of what chances do I have of keeping my gold? Mm -hmm. And it's either a Dominic Cruz fight or you move up to fucking 145, and no matter what, if you lose, you still have your 135, or technically 125. Right, yeah. Belt. Mm -hmm. So that's and why he's talking shit to, Vol to Volkanovsky. Of course yeah. he is. So In Henry's defense, he says he wants to be the legends of yes. the sport. That's why he's taking this Dominic Cruz fight. That's why he wanted to take the Jose Aldo yes. fight. And he has a point with that because he, they both are legends. Yes, has he had a legends fight though? I think he has. Yeah. I think he was defined when he beat DJ. Yes, it was a very razor thin close fight. Could have went either way, but there's your legacy fight. That's debatable. Bigger than a Jose Aldo Dominic Cruz. Like uh -huh. maybe not Dominic Cruz because Dominic Cruz beat DJ. But you got to remember, so many people's opinions. DJ is the one of the goats of yes. MMA. I still think GSP slightly edges him out. In terms of goat status. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, totally. But DJ is fucking up there for sure. Yes. He's up there with John Jones. He's up there with Habib and he's up there with GSP. Those are my four fucking goats. That's my round Mount Rushmore event. Well, DJ right has to be it's on one there. He was so dominant for so long. Mm -hmm. Maybe throw Fedor up there. Yeah. Just because he was so famous. I didn't really get, we didn't get to see him in that. No, we didn't. No. So that was the biggest thing. But you, you know, either way, Henry Cejudo, my man, if you're trying to take out fucking legends, do it when they're on a winning streak, please. <laughs> do, do it after. Yeah. Do it where it's it's necessary. Like, if this is a sport, is this a sport or is this an entertainment business? Exactly. Can I give an example? Yes, go ahead. I think it's wise when, when people take fights, you know, when Damian Maya was winning fight after fight after fight after fight. Tyron Woodley took that fight. Mm -hmm. I think that was smart because Damian Maya deserved it. Mm -hmm. He was a legend. I mean, mm -hmm. dude, Damian Maya is yeah. a fucking legend. legend of the sport. And Tyron Woodley took the fight. Yeah, it wasn't the most entertaining fight, but it made sense. No, that that, sense. that fight was less entertaining than the Wonder Boy fights. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that's but but you have to take it, though, because it is one of the greatest jiu-jitsu practitioners of yeah. all time. Oh, yeah. That stepped, stepped foot on the octagon, you know, by far and away. So we had to take that. That makes sense. Yeah, it, that was a legacy you know? fight, yes. for sure. But you can't, take a, you can't take a legacy fight after a guy had lost the belt, hasn't fought in two and a half years, and then you're going to take that fight and say, oh, if I beat him, it's a leg. It's, it's not the same thing. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? We're dealing with two different things here. Damian Maia was consistent. He was winning. Tyron Woodley beat him. Boom. One of the greats. One thing I failed to mention. This exact same situation has happened before with Dominic Cruz. He was out for years, came back into a fucking title fight with TJ, and fucked him up and beat him. Yeah, good point. And beat him. So, I, you know, we just could be talking shit about Dominic Cruz. Maybe he comes and fucks Henry up and really is. Oh, shit, he is the GOAT. Oh, now, and he is just as good as he was before he left. Oh, now, hold on. If, if you're asking me, do I think Dominic Cruz has a chance against Henry Because he definitely, yes. Absolutely, yes, he definitely he does. does. And I, yeah. if, anything, yes. if anything, it is a tough fight. Yes. But it, it's not the fight that is deserved. I'm not yes. talking about Dominic Cruz's skill set. Okay, yes. we, we, we need to, like, put a wall up yes. right now between the two. I'm not talking about Dominic... Throw all that aside. I am talking about who deserves the next fight. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. And I'm talking yes. about smart fights and why Henry would choose uh, that fight being a smart fight. I mean, if you look at it again, I'm just talking on paper here. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm talking. Do I think Dominic Cruz has the skill set 
to whoop Henry's ass. Yeah, I do. I really think he's got the skill set. And not only that, this is Dominic Cruz's natural weight. This is, I mean, and yes, it is Henry Cejudo's natural weight, but he's a smaller guy for 135. He's not the biggest 135 guy in the world. Dominic Cruz is a fairly sized 135. He's a a bigger 135 for sure. So for me, dude, that's just, yeah, we got to make sure we're totally separating that. We're not talking Mm -hmm. shit about Dominic Cruz. No, definitely not. But it is a smart fight to take, and I don't think the fight's deserved. That's what I'm saying. Absolutely. Because you have Petri Jan and Aljamain Sterling who've been working their ass off in the UFC, rising the ranks for the last two years, who both deserve it. And it's very so. frustrating for not only them, but for, f- for fucking fans, too. Mm-hmm. Like, triple cringe. Like, yeah, he's doing his thing. He's doing his Colby Covington impersonation. Yeah. And it's good. It's working for him. It really is. It's getting people to talk about him, and it's working. Yeah, it's So smart. good for him. Yeah. Good for him on that. But, but it's like, bro, if you want to make some real fucking fans, you got to fight savages like Pietro Jan. You got to fight Aljo. Fight the number one contender. The tough guys. Please. Yeah. The you tough know? guys that have been in the UFC. Like the, And I get it. Dominic Cruz. Again, injuries. That's fine. Mm-hmm. But I'm just, I feel like I'm circling here. Yeah. But again, it's just two and a half years. It's too long. Yeah. Got to have long. one fight. Got to have long. one fight. Way too long. And that's not even the main event. No. There's our main event better than that. Yes, okay, there's is. a lot of things I could think of. Ferguson was versus Habib, <laughs> uh, <laughs> for yeah, one, for, definitely, for one, definitely. Uh, but, but this is this is a real close second. It is. This is a real close second. It is. I'm it's def- going to be a fun fight. Very, very fun fight. I cannot wait to see if it actually happens or not. Because I, I really do feel like Tony versus Habib's fucking curse. It probably will never happen. So we'll I, see. Th- I, think I just hope happen. this. I hope this fight happens. Because if this fight happens, it goes. Oh, maybe Tony can fight Habib again. <laughs> We'll see who wins. Dude, if, if, oh my God, I swear, I will never watch UFC ever again. If Tony Ferguson wins this fight and doesn't get a title shot next, oh, it's, done. I'll never, I'll never, I'm serious. I'll protest the UFC every day. I really will. Front, that's, front the, yeah, I don't think they'll ever do that. I really hope not. I mean, because that's just a bad look, period, for your company. <laughs> if they all throw in McGregor, he Dana, comes in and fights Habib instead, dude. Dana would no. get fucking death threats. He'd get. Beating yeah. the shit out of on the streets of Vegas. I didn't, Dana's, Dana's not doing that. There's no way. If Tony wins that fight, he gets the next shot. He has period. to. So Tony Ferguson versus Justin Gaethje, everybody. Main event, UFC 250, May 9th, Fight Island. What do you think? Oh, my God. Uh, this is, again, as I said earlier, a close second. Mm-hmm. This is the fight I'd love to see. And Gaethje's a guy who deserves an interim belt. Yes. Title shot. Yes. You know, because he was the next in line. Behind Habi- or behind Ferguson, he was he was my number two guy. Yes, we said multiple times on this podcast that he didn't have to take a fight. He was a fucking he was ready for a title shot. Yep. He was groomed. He was he was set up. So this is beautiful. This is beautiful. Habib has come out and said, one thing I failed to mention earlier, Habib has said he's not fighting until September. Of course, because of Ramadan. Mm-hmm. Ramadan well, Ramadan ends fucking late May or but something yeah, like again, that. Again, but, but you got to train for exactly. three months exactly. to get and back into shape. And that's just, and that's not even a training camp. Mm-hmm. And he's a guy that takes eight weeks every single time for a training camp. He yep. says he needs six weeks of hard, hard training and then two weeks of weight cut. Yep. So that's his system. He has it down to a fucking T. That's what he does. Hey, so, yeah, he's a champ too. He's and, got every right to do it. Exactly. He He's, he's the A-side. He's the one dictating the terms. Yep. So it's understandable. But this fight... For an interim belt, it's sweet, man. Who McGregor? Who can I? Can Connor? I, who I have a question. Can you turn in two interim belts for a real belt? Because <laughs> <laughs> he it, should. Because I'm telling you right now, man. If Tony Ferguson, Tur- Tony Ferguson, geez, wins this belt, another interim belt. Yeah. Can we just give him the real thing? Honestly. And can we just have a double champ fight in the lightweight? Honestly, because like, I don't even want to call it an interim belt. I don't want either. I, I don't. Like, I want to call it the BMF belt of the lightweight division. That's what it should it's be. What it should that's be, what it should be, That's what it should be. Because it is the BMF yeah. fight. Justin Gaethje versus Tony Ferguson. Yep. Are you fucking there it is. kidding me? It's there the it fucking, is. It's the fucking dude with the one-touch knockout power in his right hand. I don't know what the fuck happened. He just must have woke up one day and had fucking God himself talking to him and gave him this great power in his right hand, which is ending fools in the first round versus fucking Blades and Shades. Dude's actually insane. <laughs> Blades and Shades. I love it. <laughs> the dude's actually insane and uses his elbows in so many oh creative God. ways. I just I can't fucking wait for this fight. He's a wild There's man, so much too. Blood I love knocked, Ferguson. Though. I love Gaethje, too. I like both these guys. I love them both. You know what? Both of them seem to actually like each other and have respect Mm -hmm. for each other, which is kind of a nice thing, too. It is. It is nice. You know, there's no bad blood. There's no anything. There's just two dudes who are just uh, 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 maulers. It's like Tony when when he fought Cowboy. 
Mm-hmm. There was no shit talking no, of between course them. They, it was all respect. It was all fucking cool. This is what I want to see. It's two guys shake each other's hands and then get into the octagon and fuck each other up. Okay. That's one of my yeah. favorite things. Well, it's fairly aggressive, but it is an aggressive sport. I just want to see just bleed. <laughs> just get that meme of that just bleed just guy. Bleed, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's essentially what I'm thinking. But what a great matchup. It is. It's, it's, it's fantastic. The, I really hope this this comes to fruition. I yeah. hope this card is put together. Yeah, me too. It's it's the only matchup to make. Of course. It's it's the only matchup to make in the lightweight division. There's no one else you can give an interim title shot to other than Tony Ferguson and Justin Gaethje. There's no one else. You know what not fight Connor, I not no one. Yeah, you know what fight I really want to see? I really want to see it. And I don't think we'll ever see it. And in we've talked about it before. For whatever reason, I think stylistically, I would love to see McGregor versus Ferguson. Yes, everyone. Yeah, I well, just it's stylistically yeah. it's such a a, a perfect fight. It's for essentially both of them. Justin Gaethje versus Tony again. It's the of same course. fight, a little bit different because mm-hmm. McGregor's got a little bit more karate style in his yeah. stance and stuff, yeah. more kicks. In the but but the, the leg kicks distance. of Gaethje's a difference. Yeah. It's, it, it's different when you when you're mm-hmm. talking textbook breaking this shit down. It's, sure. it's different yeah. fighters. But essentially, you got a fucking piston of a right hand and a piston of a left. Like choose it, motherfucker. Yeah. Who do you want to fight? You want to fight a southpaw pissed off Irishman or a fucking pissed off American right hand? with a savage wrestling background. Mm-hmm. So I guess they're they're not the same. No, like, let's not. be real. No. They're not the same fighters. I was going to let you work that out and then yeah. be like, yep, okay, yeah, come okay. to a they're, different they're conclusion. Not the <laughs> they're, they're not the same. But essentially, in terms of their striking, they both got one-punch knockout power, and that's essentially yeah. what you're what you're trying to do exactly. right now. So we'll see, man. This, this fight is so interesting because Tony is one of those guys that gets cracked every single fight. Well, and so I know I've Gaethje. said this before, but exactly. So is Gaethje, And dude. Tony... And they can s- both take a beating. And Tony surprised me with how much fucking power he has and not only his right hand, but his jab. Yeah. Dude, his jab is stiff. Super stiff for that lightweight division. Him... Paul Felder, Dan Hooker, they all got that fucking long arm, stiff left-handed jab, dude, and they use it so well. Tony, Tony has got scary power in his hands. Nobody talks about Tony's power. Yeah, everyone talks about his elbows, about his jujitsu, about his quirkiness, about how his awkward, weird fight style that's un- his unpredictableness, his fucking his blah blah blah. It goes on. Nobody talks about his power. He's got scary power. He does. He's like we all saw what he was doing to Donald in that second round. Crazy. He was fucking him up with he his was. hands. He was hitting him with bricks, too. Yep. And even Joe Rogan at one point had to say, like, man, Tony's, Tony's hands, it doesn't <laughs> seem like he's hitting you that hard, but, man, they're like bricks. His face was getting fucked up. It was. Great fight. That's a great fight to go back and watch for a you know, You know what he said after the end of that fight? What? I'm a fucking turtle. <laughs> It's a great interview. I don't know if you missed it. That's all he said. I'm a fucking turtle. He <laughs> walks, walks off. off. <laughs> turtle. Yeah. Well, uh, d- d- that will go down as one of the greatest cards of all time. If they can make it happen, we'll see. We'll see. I think there's a lot of stuff that I wrote down that we could just skip because we're already at an hour. Okay. We talked a lot. Well, yeah. But, we, but there's definitely a few things we do get to talk about yes. before we stop. Yeah, definitely. You know, uh, and one of the biggest, in my opinion, is what happened last week. Anthony Smith came up in the news, everybody. He had an intruder break into his house in the middle of the night and I guess was just apparently screaming at the top. Of the Very scary. And, you know, in a situation like that, you don't know if the guy's on drugs. You don't know mm-hmm. if he has a weapon. Mm-hmm. You don't know if he's, you know, a Ted Bundy who's going to break in your house and kill your whole family. Mm-hmm. Like, that's a that's super. That's nothing to, like, joke around about. That's no. super scary. Yeah. S- t- terrifying situation. He did an interview. He's got kids, too, man. Yes. And he's got that kids. That was the scariest part is yeah. because... So apparently from coming from his words, he was woken up by his wife. Mm-hmm. His wife went, there's someone in the house. Yep. And he instantly went, what? And then he instantly heard screaming in the house and it came from his kitchen. And he, he was saying like the guy wasn't trying to be quiet or anything. Nope. Like he was just nope. screaming, screaming at the top of his lungs, screaming for somebody, screaming some weird shit. They had no idea what was going on. It, it, it seems like at that situation would be, Fairly obvious, this guy's on some drugs. Yeah, of course, some Meth very hard or drugs. something like that. Yeah, yeah. where like you're it, just your mind's going crazy. Yeah, it, I would assume meth. Yeah, that's, especially because of the way the story continues. So apparently, Anthony Smith uh, confronted him instantly, got out, and he said in the interview it was the one of the only nights his gun isn't by his bed. Yep. He said his gun was in a gun case underneath his bed, so he had zero time to go grab it. So he it confronted this guy unarmed in his underwear. And apparently, the f- when him and this guy first made eye contact, this is how you know this guy's fucked up on drugs. The first thing he did was he flexed at him. Exactly. 
Yep. Chest and then charged at him. And flexed at him. Mm-hmm. Well, Anthony charged at him, I think. I don't know, actually. Maybe I thought in the get, interview, Ariel, uh, in the maybe, Ariel Hawani. Er, maybe. Essentially, Anthony said he ran him over. Yeah. Took him down to the ground he straight away. He also said it was one of the hardest fights he's ever had in his life. Yes. Yes. But, I mean, again, if it, when you got a guy methed out or something like that on crazy drugs, just yes. yelling, they, they have superhuman strength. They're yes. crazy strong. There's a reason why the Nazis use meth as a fucking superhuman drug back right. in World War II. Like, yeah. you know, they were giving their fucking super, superhuman, at the time, fighters... War warriors fucking that it's shit. Fucking so crazy. it's wild. Yeah, and amphetamines it, are no joke. And Anthony said that there was literally nothing he could do to stop this guy. Mm-hmm. It didn't matter what he was throwing at him: knees, elbows, fists, hitting him in as hard as he can. There was he wasn't putting this guy out. It's terrifying. This guy was not going out. No, nope. and he. This, from what I remember, this isn't Anthony Smith, the fucking garbage man down the street. This is Anthony <laughs> yeah. Smith, like light heavyweight <laughs> contender, number three in the entire world. Mm-hmm. Like Savage is KO's fucking legends. KO's people all the time. He's got a fight coming up. He's been literally training for a fight, and he can't fuck this guy up. And he said he was about 160, 170 pound uh, dude. Jesus, and he couldn't put him away, dude, because no. the meth was just f- flowing through the veins. Yeah, yeah, it's just crazy. So, apparently, at one point, uh, they were screaming at each other. They were trying to hold the conversation. The guy was fucked up. He goes, "Are you alone?" And the guy said, "Jeremy, where are you, Jeremy?" He started screaming some name, "Jeremy, come help me, Jeremy, Jeremy!" And that's when Anthony Smith freaked out. He instantly thought, fuck, there's someone else in the house, and who's going to protect his family? He's already trying to control one guy on the ground. Who's going to protect his fucking family at that point yeah. if there's another guy? He said he grabbed the knife and put the knife up to the dude's throat and was ready to kill the guy at one point because he was he, he thought you would have to go fight another person. Well, of course. You know? I mean, it's either it's either this random person or your family. You're, you're going to make that it's, tough yes, choice. It, you have to. And. I commend Anthony for not being for not doing it honestly because well, course, it, it, yeah. it, it it's one of those situations where you're essentially 100% justified yes to end someone's life yeah you know and, and I'm so I'm so glad he didn't because that would have made this story take such a darker turn definitely and you know it's it's just so crazy apparently the police finally fucking showed up and that that was apparently when Anthony just completely his emotions completely overcame him was finally when he had to stop and then the police had to escort Anthony about his out of his own house because <laughs> he there was just they were scared he was gonna freak out again and try oh, to kill wow. the guy or something like that so uh there was no second person he was just screaming some crazy shit and his his kids were apparently in the bedroom the entire time he the his eldest daughter was hiding his younger her younger siblings underneath the bed and like protecting them it, it's just heartbreaking to hear that Jesus. shit it really is like no one deserves and th- this is the worst part anthony smith left his garage door open that's what i heard so he left his garage door open that's how the guy got in apparently this guy was breaking into a bunch of people's houses that night and the last house was his worst choice. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> like, literally, <laughs> well, you know what? But also, like, the guy's lucky to be alive. Yes, because if he would have done it, like, say if he would have broken into our house, mm-hmm. I would have fucking shot his ass, dude. Exactly. I ain't fighting this guy, some meth head no. to the fucking death, dude, nope. by hand. No, I'm not doing that shit. No. I'm shooting a motherfucker, dude. Yeah. Yeah. And you're justified. Well, <laughs> well, right. And you also don't have the fighting capability of no, the of, of, the third rank contender of the entire uh, light heavyweight division. Yeah. In the world. Yeah. He, he, <laughs> he, Anthony Smith, I mean, God, Anthony Smith said he spent about three days afterwards just doing interviews and stuff. He was supposed to do podcasts, but he had every news organization in the world trying to get interviews from him. And it's totally crazy, totally crazy story. And this man, not only is he lucky to be alive, but he's lucky that it was Anthony Smith. Yes. He's lucky that he's it was super Anthony lucky. Smith. Cause anyone else, anyone else would have killed him. Probably. Yeah. That well, guy would and be doesn't dead. Anthony Smith live in uh, New Mexico? I bl- something I don't know. Oh, okay. That's a good question. I well, no you live, yeah, or well, somewhere Ohio or something like that. I have no idea. Oh, okay, but, uh, <laughs> <Never> never, <mind. laughs> it's it's in a good enough neighborhood where you're yeah. leaving your fucking garage door yeah, up at night and yeah. you don't care, you know. So yeah, he it's just scary, man. He said for days his his wife and kids were like scared to even stay in their own house. They would want to go get a hotel room and shit. But he's like, no, we're not going anywhere. Nope. So apparently everyone was just sleeping in his bed with him and stuff like that. It's, just, it's been a stressful time for the man. Oh, definitely. The last couple of weeks. I could imagine. And, Especially uh, with the young ones, too. Yeah. It's terrifying. And so this is this story just shook the MMA community. 
people were giving Anthony so much love and outreach thoughts, prayers, essentially. <laughs> like, there's not much you could do yeah. unless you're sending the guy money, which I'm sure he wouldn't want in the first place. But uh, just the guy got so many positive messages, and one of the best positive messages he got was uh, so happy that uh, Anthony Smith's family is okay. No way that dude would have left my house walking. That was uh, John Jones, everybody, the, mm-hmm. the, the heavyweight goat. He only went... Uh, Five rounds with Anthony Smith, so he knows exactly how tough that man is. He does. Yeah. I didn't really think that was a very classy thing to say, but I was like, uh, that's not that bad. I mean, you're kind of essentially saying is Anthony Smith's the bitch for not finishing yeah, the for guy. Not killing him, yeah. For not finishing yeah, the guy that's or what something you're like saying that. Yeah. In so many words. Yeah, it's uh for me, I think it's, it's a dig. I think it's out of line. It's a dig. I really do. It yeah. really is a little bit of a dig. I mean, you're talking about the guys. Like, the, come on, dude. That it's not the time. It's not the fucking time. Yeah, we get it, dude. You're you're cool. You're the fucking UFC light heavyweight champion in the world. You're badass. Right, you're but this go. guy just has a traumatic. You, you know, those kids yeah. are going to be terrified to sleep in their own home for for probably months, man. Yeah. Like it, it, this is different. You you don't have to say something like that. Maybe the, you know what, Jones. Maybe he didn't. Feel that or want to to kill a man in front of his children, mm-hmm. and to explain that to your six year old daughter. Mm-hmm. I mean, think before you 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 use yeah, have your, your kids have, you have to tell your kids to Twitter. shield their eyes so they don't see a dead fucking body in their kitchen, right? And know that dad <laughs> killed him. Yeah, yeah. After it doesn't here, matter. Kids it, don't understand that, dude. I, they're so impressionable mm-hmm. yes. at that age. Like when you're six or seven, you see something like that. You see your dad do that, mm-hmm. like. And, and to try to comprehend and understand why that happened at that young age. Like, mm-hmm. Anthony Smith is going through a very traumatic time, like, mm-hmm. with his family in general, and then mm-hmm. trying to comfort his wife. And, that, and he's still doing comment, a training camp. Right. And that <laughs> comment does not need to be made. No. It doesn't. No. It because doesn't. think about it, John. Like, would you want to kill someone in front of your daughter? No. It's not your go-to right away. That's so worse I, than, and that just makes it worse because they're already going through so much. You got to think they're hiding in the fucking corner of their rooms as they can hear their dad possibly around. fighting for his life. They don't know you if don't their know dad's going to live or not. Exactly. In that moment, Anthony, you don't know. Anthony Smith said he didn't know if the man had a gun. He didn't know if the guy had a knife, but he essentially, when he engaged him, he said, I'm going to die. He knew I'm already dead, essentially, and he knew that at any moment he might die. Yes. He might succumb to whatever this man is, and he's willing to fucking kill himself to protect his family, like anyone really would, any decent person at least. I feel yes. like so. It, that yeah, that comment doesn't need to be made. Anthony Smith did respond. He did. He did respond. What a perfect moment to flex, John, in the middle of a disaster like that in my home. What a perfect opportunity to flex how goddamn cool you are. Just when you thought. That's a pretty admiral of John Jones to reach out, wish me well. Then as you continue reading, you're like, oh, that's right. I forgot. You're still a douchebag. It's just like his opportunity. It's it's just his opportunity to inter- insert himself and make sure everyone knows how cool and badass he is. That's a perfect response. It though. really is. Because, I mean, John, John didn't need to say that. No. And that is him, again, inserting himself. It really is. Into, into the limelight. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I just, I don't know. The audacity. I just, it's, it's crazy. I can't believe like, in, in what, what mind do you think that's okay? It's, it's an obvious, it's an obvious ego maniac fucking like this guy's got a, this guy's got a serious ego. This guy's an ego maniac for sure. Oh yeah. He's got (laughs) to have his ego massaged at all times. And if he doesn't, what does he do? He acts like a 16 year old pissed off teenage boy and goes, shoots his guns off getting drunk and then blames other people for it. Yeah. You know, can never just own up and take accountability. Yeah. This guy's, this guy's really quickly moving up the ladders. Like my still the greatest of all time. Though. Still, still one of them. Still the greatest. <laughs> still one of them. Asterisk, Pico Grams, fucking cheater, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, John Jones responded to that when you thought it couldn't get any worse for I know. my guy. Oh yeah. We haven't even, we haven't even finished this yet. Yeah. <laughs> when, when you thought it couldn't get any worse for my guy, shooting a gun off, going plea deals, fucking talking shit about a man who just almost fought for his life and almost died in front of his children. Um, Anthony, if you're going to leave your garage door open at night, hurry up and buy this gun or buy the family a gun, some mace or something. That's all. He, he could have stopped right there. He mm. could have stopped right there and being the biggest douche in the entire world. Of course. Everyone hates him. Oh, no, but there's uh, sentence number two. <laughs> but there's more. But there's, oh, and there's more. And there's more. <laughs> but wait, there's more. <laughs> it's like that Billy Mays. Billy Mays here. No. Uh, a douchebag more like me 
would have completely had his way with you all night, and that could have been bad for everybody. You know what, John? This is number one bullshit. You're an asshole. <laughs> you I don't like you. Fucking asshole, dude. Ugh. How how do you how do you how do you sleep? Like just being that big of a uh, douche. <laughs> you know, like it's past fighting, it's past competitiveness, it's past sports. It's just like you as a person. Like I just don't, I don't think he cares it. anymore, dude. Like, with this bullshit going on, he's like, "Fuck it." Everyone already hates me anyway, so he he must think at least who who knows. Who yeah, knows? It's like everyone doesn't hate him. This guy's, I know, but this guy's got a superiority complex. He's got a yeah. fucking, e, he's an egomaniac. He might be this, he might be that. Yeah. He needs to stop. I don't know who his PR guy is, but that guy needs take to be his fucking fired, yeah, dude. Take his phone away. <laughs> that guy needs <laughs> no, to be dude. fired. John Jones ain't got a PR guy. Are you no, kidding me? No, he probably me? doesn't. No, yeah. of course not. No. 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 He doesn't have a driver. He ain't going to have a fucking PR guy. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Yeah, he needs to hire one real fucking quick because uh, he's slowly sinking himself into one of the biggest douches. Yes, in the he sport. is. Yeah, you know, and he just needs to stop. Man, he needs to take a fight. He needs to stop talking shit. He just needs to talk about Jesus some more, like he was doing. He, <laughs> I'm not, and I'm not saying that as an insult. Like, right? He was doing such a good job of like making me actually give a shit about him. Like, well, he yeah, seemed for like the he year was, that he came back, I was again. He yes. does this to all of us, where it's like. Yes. I had forgiven him three or four times. I th- maybe maybe that's just how fucking manipulative he is. Uh-huh. He's he just can manipulate just such the a sweet talker. Too. He just yeah. he just because when he came back uh, for this year and a half and he was just fighting, he's like, "I'm just going to stay on the straight and narrow." I was like, "Okay, awesome." Yeah, and I bought in. Yeah, but the only thing that was that red flag is when when uh, Brett Okamoto asked him uh, or Ariel asked yeah. him. Ariel asked him. He goes, "You know, are you going to be able to stay you know clean for ten years and not be in any trouble?" He goes, "Well." I don't know. A decade's yeah. a long time. Yeah. That to me told me everything I needed to know. Yeah. You know, honestly. About, about fucking John Jones. Yeah. Enough of that douche. Enough of them. So, quick news before we wrap it up, guys. It's already been an hour and 15 minutes. So, uh, quick news before we wrap it up. A few other things happened. Marty said George is 100% the next guy. Just fucking fight someone already. Take this fight. We, we got promised this for 249, maybe. You guys talked all that shit on Twitter, and now you're just going to. Did I not tell you that that fight was never going to happen? (laughs) It wasn't going to happen for that card. This fight's not going to happen until this. These two aren't. They're just. Until Fight Island in July, maybe. I don't even see it then. I don't even see it then. I don't. I don't. I don't know why. I just have zero faith in this fight. Yeah. You have no idea who to believe. It's like. No, I. Yeah. And it's like neither one wants to fight each other. And it's just like, I'm good. I'm Mm -hmm. good on that one. I really am. This this news sucks. (laughs) Valentino though, yes. Shevchenko out for yes. two fifty one. Yes, Perth. I love Valentina. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, she is a she is the the champ. She's like so the most. Hot. Well, you know, it's, <laughs> she it's is, not though. even that, man. It's just like she. I mean, she is. She's very attractive mm-hmm. woman, but yeah. but she's just so good. She's amazing. She's so good. She's so dominant. Just every fight, I'm just watching like this. Like, are you fucking kidding me? Mm-hmm. Did, it's, like, it's and she gets better every single time. Yeah. She really does. I just, man, I I was I was bummed because I was looking forward to her fighting, but I guess it was due to an injury, right? Yeah, something about her ankle or foot mm-hmm. or something like that. And your feet are so important, especially yeah. in this sport. If if you can't move, you're fucked. You know what? As, as her being a yeah, mm-hmm. exactly, and her being a dominant champ. You know what? With this coronavirus and everything going mm-hmm. on, it's a good time to just heal up and make mm-hmm. sure that you're okay. Because yes. I I don't think anyone's ever going to take the belt from her. <laughs> You yeah. know, I don't. Yeah. In other news, Chris Weidman has been offered three fights in the last three or four weeks. Two of them include Edmund Shabazian and Yoel Romero rematch. What are your thoughts? My thoughts? Chris, stop. <laughs> stop, dude. Like, I, I know he wants to be a, like, and, and I, it sucks for me because, again, we always talk about Chris Weidman. And it's like, dude, he is, he's also a legend. He defeated Anderson Silva, mm-hmm. the greatest middleweight at the time, ever. And he might be the best middleweight of all time. Can oh, you think of one better? Uh, uh, I would say Anderson still edges him Anderson out. Even though still. he beat him twice. But it's like the first fight... Uh, the first fight was more legitimate than the second, in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, the second one, it was a... Well, I mean, the kick, which a perfectly mm-hmm. timed block check, kick. But still, yeah. Yes. It's just... Nonetheless. And so I don't want to... Again, I don't want to disrespect him, but... Mm-hmm. Why do He's you gotta why sure. do you gotta keep fighting savages when you keep 
losing. Uh, uh, just take vicious a, KOs. Yeah, take yeah. Just that's so much repeated trauma over mm-hmm. and over and over again. And you're gonna go out and potentially fight Yoel Romero <laughs> again, Shabazian? <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, I just I I don't think it's smart. No, that's that's all I'm saying. I, and I don't want to be disrespectful. I yeah. really don't. But I don't. I just don't think it's wise. I agree 100%. He's been he's been knocked out too many times and too yeah. many times in a row too, consistently, yeah. over and over. It's, it's I like, mean that Reyes fight? Yeah. Like just that one alone. That I was one like, was nasty. I was like I don't want to see this anymore. No. I don't. Yeah. It's been too many times and I, I you know you, you you think about Chris Weidman, he's an American hero. Yeah. When he beat Anderson Silva, I mean, but some guys just they keep chasing and chasing. Yeah, and that's what he's doing. Yeah. Unfortunately, I, I really like Chris Weidman. He's a so great guy. He's oh, a great fighter, he's a, great he, ambassador of the sport. Great human being. You could exactly, yeah. you could just go on forever about mm-hmm. this guy, just about how awesome he is. But it's like, my guy, like, let's just let's just fucking relax. <laughs> just take, fight somebody in outside an, the top ten. Yeah, just take an up and comer. Yes, I mean I admit Shabazzian is that, but an undefeated fucking savage that's gone. Yeah. It's like KO and dudes like crazy. No, not him. Not that guy. No. <laughs> fight someone else, please. Yeah. Please. Just 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 please. Don't fight Jack Hermanson. <laughs> Jack Hermanson's the best matchup out of those three, in my opinion. Fight Jack Hermanson. Yeah. Don't fight Edmund Shabazian. Don't fight Yoel Romero. Hermanson, no please. easy fight either, though. No, that's no, but at least that might be a grappling matchup. Yeah. Yes, ground and pound. But still, it might be more grappling yeah. heavy. Hope, ho- hopefully, because <laughs> Jack Mans is n- no fucking joke on the feet either. No. But uh, yeah, that was crazy. But one thing that I was interested in this this whole coronavirus shit is we haven't heard of a fighter testing positive yet. No, we haven't until now. Lyman Good was supposed to fight Bilal Muhammad on two forty nine, the original two forty nine, not this new. Revised 249 that did get canceled by Disney. He dropped out several weeks ago and said it was an injury. Mm -hmm. And apparently two weeks later, three weeks later, he just did an interview with Ariel Hawani and he tested positive for coronavirus and so did his girlfriend. And that was the reason why they dropped out of the fight. We well, talked we about this earlier. Yeah. This. Okay, I was going to tell you, oh, but fuck. after you we were already done, did talk about yeah, this. we already God talked about it. this. But... It's been an hour thirty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we forgot. Forgot it was in the beginning. I was. I was Skip like. That. I kept giving you weird looks. Like, hold on. Am I in? Skip but then that. I was like, maybe we were talking out there about that beforehand. I don't know. But okay. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't remember. I knew we talked about it before. <laughs> right. Skip that shit. John Jones is talking a little more shit. Is this will be the last thing we do? John Jones talking a little more shit to Israel. Israel did start it. He tweeted at him, "Hey pussy, you still there?" The classic Daniel Cormier quote. Yep. <laughs> hey pussy, I love that when they're talking yeah. over the two things. He goes, "Hey pussy, you still there?" Mm-hmm. Oh, that was him <laughs> that like, said. I know that you're that not to, talking no, to never me. Never mind. Never mind. That was him that said that to Daniel Cormier. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I and he goes, Dan- "I know you ain't talking to yeah. me." You know. <laughs> and it's so funny. Oh my gosh. Yeah. He goes, I wish I could come over there and spit in your fucking yeah. face. <laughs> I'd literally kill you if you Those did that. Those two fucking hate each other. Oh, they fucking hate each other. They, they still really do. do. Oh, they of really course. Do. So, uh, of course, he replied. He had to. This is the new John Jones. He's being real for once. Yeah, <laughs> Wasting all that goddamn oxygen. Someone wake this bitch up and change his tampon. And Ooh, what's that picture? Oh, it's a big old picture of Israel Adesanya KO'd on the fucking floor. And it was the only KO loss that he's had. And it mm-hmm. was in kickboxing. wasn't in mm-hmm. MMA because obviously he's undefeated. Mm-hmm. And he was fucking people up in kickboxing. Of course man. he was. He was 50 and one, fucking right? people... Something, something crazy, crazy like yeah, that. Yeah, it was like a like really it's, high, impressive yeah. record. It's a, was it like, wasn't damn. it wasn't Stephen Wonderboy Thompson numbers where he's yeah. like 115 and mm. nothing or something stupid like that. But uh, yeah, it was it was crazy numbers. But of course, he replied, "Did he do a post and delete Dwight? I've been KO'd once and I've never made that mistake again. How many times you've been arrested? How many times you pissed hot? How many times you had your belt taken off you? Someone answer these. You never learn. You pulsating." Peaked oh pussy. <laughs> oh, that's a good shit. comeback too. That was a good one. Yeah, that was a good one. Israel's always a uh, hot on the mic. Yeah, he hot is. on the tweet. You know. Well, I mean, it's a good, yeah, it's a good point though. I mean, you know, how many times you learn that, or how many, how many times can you make the same mistake and not learn from it? And that's what John Jones is essentially. 
Yeah. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again yeah. and expecting Einstein different results. Quote. Yeah. yeah. It's one of my favorites. I Because it's true. <laughs> it is That's true. what he's doing. I mean, he's a little insane, man. I think he is. I, I think, think he, he, is, I think yeah. he just is. I think it just mm-hmm. comes down as John Jones is fucking out of his mind. We got to remember, <laughs> this motherfucker gets punched in the face for a living. You yeah, don't know what's going on upstairs. Exactly. And we know... He doesn't get punched in the. He doesn't get connected to that often in fights. Yeah, good He's point, very yeah. dominant in fights. Very, very good defense. Some of the best defense in the game. But we don't know what happens behind closed doors in sparring. Yeah. We don't know if maybe he's been KO'd a few times in sparring. Blah 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 blah. And shit like that happens. So who knows? At one point, when does CTE become a factor with John Jones? Like it almost. It seems like he. It he almost seems has pretty. To. Yeah, but he seems pretty damn sharp. <laughs> a lot sharper than a lot of the other old school fighters, bro. Come on, let's. Let's be honest here. Have you have you heard a few of them? They're starting to slur. They're fifties. The the older yeah. ones, but John Jones is still in his prime. And I mean, I mean, think about Aaron Hernandez and all these people that were in their prime where CTE was most definitely a factor. And I'm not gonna and I'm not saying CTE made Hernandez go kill those people or kill yeah, that one course, guy or yeah. whatever and, and all that shit. But at one point, it's like, okay, these people are getting punched in the head in the living and they're fucking shooting guns off and being total delinquents talking shit on Twitter, we can't be shocked. We really can't. Yeah, you can't be. But at the same time, like, you give a 20-year-old millions of dollars, and what are they going to do? You're going to have a few bad eggs. Mm-hmm. Some people are going to take that power and money and be like, fuck, I can do whatever the fuck I want. Mm-hmm. And this Maybe isn't it's an, just a power play. Yeah, and this isn't a new thing in sports. Look no, at the not. NFL. Look yep. at the NBA. These young, yeah. these young impressionable athletes get all this money, and they just fucking blow it. Or Piss they, it away. Yep, and then, and, yep. Then, and then it's all gone. And, and then they're selling like, insurance. It would be, it, and at the same time, it would be really difficult as an 18, 19 year old kid yeah, it's to have that difficult. sort of money. So, like, extremely. you know, it's not. I feel for him. Yeah, I feel for him in, in, in some ways, too, you know? Yeah. I just wish John Jones would get his shit together because I'm just tired of talking so negatively about him, honestly. I same. I, I want to, I just always want to say good things about him, but, I really I, but do. you can't. Mm-hmm. You can't. Mm-hmm. I, I, it's so disappointing. At some point, I feel like I love to hate the guy, but I really don't love to hate the guy. I want the guy to succeed, but it's like he's just fucking getting in his own way constantly. It's All the time. Just, this Anthony Smith stuff was just way too far. It's so opinion. stupid. It was really, really bad. So stupid. It was really bad. I don't really know how else to fucking end it. I, I think gotta, that's. I, I think, think that's, that's it. That. I think that's our episode, brother. <laughs> go to our Instagram. Go to our Facebook. Go to our fucking YouTube at the Church of MMA. Yep, all no. under the same banner. Mm-hmm. Uh, you guys can check us out on YouTube. Type in uh, the Church of MMA. Be sure to subscribe. Comment below. Like the videos. You know, get involved with us. Let us know what you're thinking about fights and whatnot. Yeah, hit us up. All right. My name is Mason Knight. That is Tabor Craig, and then until next time, peace. <laughs>